Hello, today is the uh, 6th of October, and uh, this is a football video, more of a coaching philosophy and the type of strategies that I would be considering if I was in a position to be that within the Green Bay Packers. Now, it is my belief that this offense might be the number one in the league. If not, it would be the New England Patriots. There's a lot of weapons within this team. And on, and on this uh, line here, this 11 players, you have starters, although there's a few guys you don't see on this list. One, of course, being the tight end. This is a backup. And then the receivers, there's no Donald Driver. Well, he's hurt right now. Well, later on, of course, he'll be back. And there's no, no Jordy Nelson as well. And Well, we'll go through this list in a while. Because the scenario I want, I want to talk about, if you're in a situation within Green Bay, Super Bowl champions and a 4-0 record, you got to assume that as long as your team plays at least half-decent, you'll get a half-decent record, th thus making the playoffs. And your goal, of course, is to get home field advantage. But with the trading deadline not quite yet done, and possibility to get a amazing deal on that on Tim Tebow well this just might work and, and you think why would you want Tim Tebow when you got Aaron Rodgers that's just insane and for most quarterbacks you'd be right but Tim Tebow is not your normal quarterback I'll go within this uh, list in a second but assume that it was a situation where you bring Tim Tebow in. A lot of times, what you're going to plan on doing is putting in a nice power package. For example, this one in here. You got quarterback Aaron Rodgers behind the centerman. Running back Tim Tebow. Yeah, he might be an extremely dangerous running back. And I emphasize the word extremely because... He's got a situation where he could probably throw as a, a running back that plays like a, a Danny Woodhead or a Green Ellis or s some committee running back that plays 60% of the time or whatever. You might end up getting days where he's like 9 for 11 passing for 65 yards. I, I'm just throwing this out there because of Tim Tebow's strengths. And maybe he'll get three or four catches a game too. I don't know. But that would be a pure football player when you can do all the positions magnificently. So let's assume that you have this package. This is the power package I would prefer. Aaron Rodgers at quarterback with Tim Tebow, the running back. We'll make Tim Tebow lining up right here. Because there's two running backs. The others is James Starks. And uh, you know what? We could even put Ryan Grant in the mix there as well. It really doesn't matter between the two. Fullback, John Kuhn. So three running backs within this play. Wide receiver, Greg Jennings. And tight end, Jermichael Finley. And a play call, I there'd be many play calls. Within many play calls, there could be three or four changes or differences within each one. I don't want to talk too complicated, but I want to go over what one of my favorites would be. And that would be quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Do it a play fake to the running back who moves to the right. This side of the line, at least up to the left guard, has to sell the run that it's going right. A pitch out to Tim Tebow, who will move towards the left. And you have fullback John Coon, who's a pretty good player, able to A, catch a ball, B, block for him. You also have McMichael, tight end, who might be able to do a turn pattern and maybe be open for a pass from Tim Tebow. Many different possibilities occur. And a lot of times, if you get a situation like this, where you have running back Tebow with a ball moving left, you have a full back and coon, and all the blockers are, have successfully managed to block who they need to block. You have one person who's free who has to choose, do I want to play against the full back or the running back? which is Tim Tebow and John Coon. Because if he plays a fullback, that means, in a sense, what he's doing is he's covering him, making it so that Tebow cannot throw to him, where Tebow will now run, 
and maybe get five, six, eight, however many yards. Now, if the defensive player says, I want to play after Tim Tebow, try to make the tackle on him, well, that's going to make Kuhn become open, and thus he could pitch it out to Kuhn, who could then possibly get a five, six, seven, eight yard gain. That's, and there's many different packages you could really work within, in my opinion. You also got a situation where if uh, Aaron Rodgers is extremely tired where a running back would need spelled, if you spell him for a couple of plays, big deal. You got Tim Tebow can come in. And if something happens where he gets a concussion or he gets injured, again, you got Tim Tebow coming in. But I consider myself like a mad scientist in a sense of the type of strategies that I can come up with. And I'm going to, for some reason, go through one of my favorites right now. And I've only played it in one game on a Madden platform, that is. And it worked extremely well. Anyways, the way it works out is you have two teams. And this is why I call it like a committee because you get as many people involved as you can. So in team one, these are the players. All the offensive linemen are starters. This is not a starter at tight end, though. But Andrew Corliss can make some plays happen. When you start the game off, these are the players that will be on the field. These will be the starting 11. And you do not play this like a normal start of the game. No. Instead, you play it like there's two minutes left in the second quarter. And you run the two-minute drill to start. Even... If there's an incomplete pass, you hurry up to the offensive line. You've already got 10, 12, 15 plays all scripted beforehand with an easy accessibility to make audible changes at the line, which is really what it comes down to because these guys are going to be out for five, six plays. And we're going to try to run six plays and we're going to try to do it in under 100 seconds if we can. Hurry up to the line. However, we don't have to be too fancy about the time if we hurry up to the line and there's 29 seconds on the play clock if it takes 20 seconds to to finally snap until the perfect play comes in so be it but this the situation is to keep the defense on the field get them super tired then when you get towards the halfway mark of the driver once you run six seven plays most players go off Aaron Rodgers goes off, James Starks goes off, Jennings goes off, Cobb goes off, Jones goes off, Corliss goes off. Chad Clifton, I'd have a hard time taking him off, baby. But if the offensive line can still continue going, then it's a different story. But yeah, they continue on. And I have BU here for backup because in practice, when these guys are doing their plays, it won't be Chad Clifton and Josh sitting there because they're starting up here. But someone on your practice squad could play that spot, however. And now you have Tim Tebow. This whole team did the exact same thing as Aaron Rodgers. Different plays, of course, so be it because they're working within their strengths, trying to minimize their own weaknesses. So now six, seven plays in, the defense has a choice. They have to choose between A, do we keep our most of our defensive players on the field, which are damn tired, two and a half minutes into the game, six plays for 48 yards or something. Or do we put some of our backups in because they're going to do the exact same thing with Tim Tebow. And yes, we are doing the exact same thing. Running the hurry up effectively. Of course, if you go three and out, you got a punt. That's part of the game. That's football. But you run this successful, you're going to really catch them off guard. Now, now here's the situation. The element of surprise is extremely important and that's why with getting 30 or 40 views on these videos I feel somewhat confident which is the reason why I'm actually doing this video I don't want thousands of people knowing this but if you set this up for the first game that matters which is what I would do especially in real life you're bringing Tim Tebow in come on he ain't gonna be ready within the system right off the bat Although, you put him in the first game, he's going to make plays because he's a football player. However, throw that aside. You come in to the first playoff game. Or it's a, a first must-win game that you consider yourself to be a true must-win game. This is when you debut it. And you pretty much run it through the entire first half. And when you do this... You're going to catch the defense off guard. I honestly don't know how you would lose this first game, but the defense has no idea this is coming. 
Because after this, they're going to have to game plan for it, and that's going to give them a huge challenge. And that's what the game's all about. Because I got about 40 or 50 of these types of gadgets that the league would not expect, of which three or four or five the NFL starting to do. One of which is a little bit like this. That is that of uh, Bill Belichick running the hurry-up offense early. Alrighty, thank you for tuning in, and uh, have yourself a great day. Bye-bye. And before I go, I want to continue on one final thing, and that was, I was mentioning I had one situation in which I run the, I ran the two team situations, and I want to explain it just a little bit, seeing an idea of where I come from within a coaching philosophy. Situation is this, I'm playing Madden 12, and yes, I know it's just a, a, a video game, and quite frankly, a lot of it is unrealistic, but then again, the stuff that I would like to do, which is as I mentioned, show Tim Tebow as a multi-purpose player I cannot do on the game myself, so it can work in both ways. I have, a, I have the Cleveland Browns, and I'm 8-5 against the Arizona Cardinals. I control my own destiny if I win all three games and finish 11-5, that is to make the playoffs and win the division. A loss only means I control my own destiny to make the playoffs. So in this game against the Arizona Cardinals, down large in this game, I run the hurry-up offense in the second half, and well, Tim T Tebow is not playing the quarterback by committee, and I put a thing in my fault because after I've completed this game, I'm thinking in real life, I would feel so bad for putting a quarterback out and just pretty much putting his life on the line, basically, and he broke his elbow the game out for the season. What can you do? So now I got to win both games just to make the playoffs. The next game's against Baltimore, so it's, that's not easy. My QBs are Colt McCoy, Seneca Wallace, who are on the Cleveland Browns right now. Josh McCown I had to add as the emergency guy after the putting IR on Tim Tebow. So I play the system I talk about, and I spread out my running backs, my wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line, and pretty much everybody played. There was a couple offensive linemen who I gave the whole game to because their ratings were high and they really never got all that tired. But anyway, in this game it worked out better than I even thought of. The only game in this current season mode, and it's in a hard level as well, where I really owned this game before it started. This was the only chance I ever had where I could even put my backups in the fourth quarter. And the first drive up 7 nothing, And then the next one, Cleveland throws a pick 6, and I'm up 13 nothing. I go for 2. Uh, yeah, that's a different episode on the reason for why I went for two. And then I got another touchdown, and I got the two-point conversion, so it's 21 nothing. And then I did it again, another two-point conversion, and a field goal, and another touchdown, and an end-of-the-half field goal, and 42 nothing at the break. So I consider this game to be locked. Second half is no longer hurry-up, and with the score 49 nothing, with four minutes left in the third quarter, I use... An 11 a minute accelerated clock, which seems to work most realistic for how the real game is played, at least for amount of plays per game. And when you do stuff like this, oh boy, the amount of plays you would have is insane. But in the second half, it's uh, it's no longer hurry up offense, like I say. And Josh McCown enters the game with uh, four minutes left in the third quarter, uh, quarter. And the way the rules would work out, because I put him in in the third quarter, he has to finish this game. But up 49 nothing. I realized at worst I could just run the ball every play and end the game. But I wanted to see what I can get out of this guy. And in real life, I'd want to just give him some practice time. And he throws a pick six his first play, 49-7. Well, settle down. Final score is 59-7. And I went for a touchdown with three seconds left. The way it worked out is I had the ball at the 40-something yard line with a minute 40 left and three timeouts. And I figured in real life, what would I do? I'd be like, okay, Josh McCown, I, I look at this as this is practice. And we got a real defense on the field. We got real referees on the field. We even have real fans. Well, not many left at this stage, but we have a real situation here. And let's see how you can run this. Pretend there's two minutes left in the game and that we're down by four. Let's see you go for a touchdown. And that's exactly what I did. And I ended up getting one. And in real life, the media would be like, well, why did you go for it? Why didn't you just kneel down? And I'd have to tell them the exact same reason. 
And uh, week 17, I defeated Pittsburgh in a barn burger. Seattle, Cincinnati beat Baltimore, and that meant that I got the number three seed, and I play Baltimore at home. And what would be the wild card game? And I still would have to. And I, go, I like to go through different strategies because in real life, one of my dreams is to be able to just throw this mad system. In real life, I think it could be possible. If it doesn't, big deal. There's no, there's nothing. Nothing hurts within trying, which is part of the reasons why I'm making this video. Maybe one of these days, one of the NFL coaches, like a Bill Belichick, will see it and think, "Hey, man, this guy might know what he's talking about." And then try one of the situations that I bring up. Like I said, I got so many different little small plays. One of which, of course, is a going for two when you don't need to strategy. And uh, that's purely mathematical. And uh, that's, like I say, a different episode. And now uh, this is like 15 minutes. So now it's time to say goodbye and take care.